zero and you're already getting dirty? Yeah. yeah. Just, just uh, 1,600 miles on it so far. So just doing a little oil change, a little maintenance. So you're one of those crazy guys that drives a race car to race week and then drives it around and then drives it home? Yeah. What are we uh, looking at here? It's a GTO? It's a, it's a 1965 GTO, yeah. With okay. With a uh, 517 cubic so inch Pontiac. 10 to 1 motor with a 94 okay. millimeter turbo. Yep. How much power is the car making? Well, current setting is about 950 horsepower. It'll make 1500 horsepower. Yeah. Is this the setup you're going to have it on all week? About about 900 to 1000. You see that car over there? Yeah. So if I see the parachute on that one in front of me, then no, this one needs. To be a little more. <laughs> We're going to turn it up a little bit. So the next setting is it's about 300 horsepower more. Just change the springs. It'll be 1,286 uncorrected. So I don't know what 1,400 or something at the wheels. Gotcha. So where are you from? Where did you drive? Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. You came from Canada. Yeah. You drove your race car from Canada to race week, and then you're gonna race. You're gonna drive it. I actually, I didn't even come to Kansas. I actually drove it to Colorado to see Bill, and then I drove 400 miles from there to here, which was, it's pretty much the same distance. It's 1,200 miles from my house to here, uh -huh. 1,200 miles from my house to Bill's. But I went to Bill's, hung out there, and then just for a day. And then uh, we drove here yesterday. You're like you're a road warrior. That's that, that is that is absolutely awesome that you did that. Yeah. yeah well, it's it's got a, a T56 Magnum in it with a .5. It's a six-speed car. With a six-speed. Yeah. This car just got a lot cooler in my yeah. look. That's awesome. So it'll do. Like we cruised yesterday. We pretty much filled up with gas. Did 200 miles. Stopped and filled up with gas. I got 21 miles to the gallon. U.S. Really? Not Canadian. Really. And I was, I was blown away. I didn't think it would do that. Well, this can't be your first race week. You've done this quite a few times. I've done race week uh, last year was my first year, but I've done drag week 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and I'm doing it this year. Awesome. So what would you say is the biggest hurdle or problem on the road for driving a race car 1,100 miles? Heat. Heat? Yeah, that's what it's been. I mean. I've got my valve train all sorted out enough that uh, I check it, it's not moving at all, so that stuff's all scienced out, but you can't, like it was, it was 104 degrees yesterday. Yeah. So I actually have a cooling system for my fuel, but heat, heat and fuel vaporization. Va vapor lock would yeah. I imagine be a problem. Yeah. Wow. Especially with fuel injection and with fuel rails and picking up heat, so I got a few more tricks I'm going to try today before the drive to see if, to see if that'll sort it out. But. What's your best ET with the car? Last year it had a supercharger in it. Okay. It went 9.6 at 147. And now you got the 98 millimeter turbo on it. Yeah, and it makes about 400 horsepower more than it. Very nice. Awesome. It should do the trick if I can figure out how to drive it. I got some work to do this week. There you go. Well, at least you got today. all week. Yeah, you got today to work out all week. You yeah. just got to make it to the tracks and you'll be fine. Yeah, as long as the spare transmission that's over there doesn't end up in the car, I'll, uh, I'll keep beating on it pretty hard. Well, at least you got it for a backup. All right, well, I love the car. I love the fact that you drove it here. That is awesome. We're going to be following you all, all week as long as you keep making it places. So. Yeah. Good luck today. Good luck the rest of the week. All right, thank you. Absolutely. Like, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. come harass you because you're his competitor and I need to annoy you or something. I don't know. You have a 1320 shirt on. Yeah, I do have a 1320 shirt on. <laughs> so it's my job to come annoy you anyway. <laughs> so your competitor over here uh, said that this this is basically the car to beat in stick shift class right here. You are. I'm flattered. That's Terrence. what he said. He said you are the car to beat in stick shift class. Okay. So it's a twin turbo 427 Correct. Windsor. Yep. Well, uh, dart, dart block, but Windsor platform. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Uh, how much power is the car making? About 450. You're a terrible liar. No, You're a I know. It, uh, it made 11-11 uh, corrected to the tire. There you go. Okay, that's that's a better number there. And what's what kind of ETs do you run? Uh, it's gone, it went 922 best last year. Um, and then this year, and that was, I didn't have a boost controller on it. So I've added a boost controller and uh, did some testing before we got here. And it's trapped 158, but it was pinging off the rev limiter. So I re-geared the car this week, went from 410 to 370. 
Um, and that may actually help the car get off the line because it was blowing the tires off. I was having a real tough time with that. And with some less gear, it may not uh, put quite as much torque multiplication. It may help it get off the line. We'll just see. And I got some brand new slicks. Still got the little nubbies on them. Oh, really? So we'll Very see. Very nice. That might help too. There you go. Yeah, you know, stick car, especially uh, diaphragm type clutch, which him and I are running the same transmission, same clutch. T56, same clutch, all that good This stuff. one's face plated, but you know, they're still basically the same. What kind of mileage do you get with this? Um, so I got 15 pulling that trailer yesterday going 7580. That's not bad at all. It's not, it's totally. He said he got 21 in his, and I, I was I was just starstruck by that, because I was yeah. like, my cars don't get 21 miles a gallon, and it's not you no know, thousand horsepower you know, car like that. So that's yeah, awesome. no, he's got uh, 517 cubic inch, and yeah. 21, I was blown away too. Yeah. I was like, no way. How many race weeks have you done with this car? This would be three. I've done three race weeks and two drag weeks. Uh, the drag weeks I did with a different drivetrain, just a naturally aspirated motor. Gotcha. What would you say is the one thing that is the biggest struggle on, on drag, on race week or drag week for you? Uh, for sure it's the drive. I mean, there's no question. Racing at the track is fine, but it's the drive and making the stuff live. You know, I've learned I've learned a lot from Rich um, over the years. And, and you know, frankly, the guy that built the motor built a great motor. But the first race week I did, uh, I got home, the valve train was destroyed. We put five, ten thousand miles a year on this thing, so I drive it all the time. Kids to school, grocery store, I drive it all the time. Right. Um, so I needed a valve train that wasn't just for the drag strip. I needed something that worked, and it seems to be that we've got it figured out. That's I'm cool. really excited to see this car run. It's gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. It looks like a show car, but to think that twin turbo small block and you're going to drive it 1,100 miles is awesome to me. Well, so. it'll be. Probably close to, well, it'll be 2,500 probably after I get back home. Jesus. It's far, 450 miles from here to home. That is crazy. So you tack, that's 900. You're exactly. going to add on to whatever yeah, we yeah. do this week. So, yeah. So it's fun. Awesome. Well, good, good luck with the car today Thanks, and for the rest of the week. All right. Yeah, we'll see you. Thank you. Yep. safety set up in the ECU and so in fourth gear it reverted to the wastegate. Really? If it hadn't done that it would have been an 8. It would have easily been an 8. Oh yeah. I would think. I don't know. Well, but congratulations yeah. on, Thank on, you. on, yeah. on the personal best. Yeah, pretty I heard psyched. that I was like, well I gotta go talk to him at some point. <laughs> Thank any, you. any troubles so far on the road? Uh, I know we're only about an hour. Not on the road. It tossed a fan belt or alternator belt yesterday. Okay. And I didn't think too much of it, but it took out the wire. It ripped the wire out for one of the cooling fans. Oh, okay. So it 
kind of cobbled it back together in the hotel. We'll see if we can get a fan. I had to double check, make sure it's working still. Gotcha. But uh, otherwise, it's good. Good. Yeah. Glad to hear it. I do have to say, seeing a car this large go down the drag strip and knowing it's a it's a six speed car, it's crazy. Because what, what did this do yesterday? A nine. It just went. It just no. It just went ten oh at oh, one forty two. That's. But that was six pounds boost. So it'll yeah. be fourteen pounds boost in the next ride. Oh, okay. Very nice. They're not small cars, and they're doing. I waited at the track. It was thirty nine eighty five. And you're doing a ten oh. That's 10 on six pounds of boost. It should run in nines, so I'm coming out for him tomorrow. That's, but that, that's insane to me that your cars are just that fast, and it's a six-speed car too, so it's very impressive. Yeah. Any, any trouble on the road or anything yet? No. No, I'm just gonna throw some ice in my fuel cooler, so I don't have any problems. There you go. No vapor lock or anything like that. Yeah. So far, so good. Though it's running like a champ. Good. Glad to hear it. Nice and quiet. Got the tunes on. <laughs> Do you have air conditioning on this? Yeah, see the quarter little vent window there? Oh, I know that all too well. I have a, I have an old, I have an old Corvette, so that is my air conditioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very nice. Mm. You got like a, you got like a, a still in here. You making some moonshine for us? <laughs> to keep happy down the road. <laughs> that is very. This, this just, that just looks like you've done this quite a few times. So yeah. you, you've, you've managed. You're, you're a, you're a race weaker. You know, you know this, how to get things this, done. Uh, because of the altitude and the temperature, yeah, you gotta have something to do to cool your fuel, whether it's an inline cooler or this works good because it it's my air to water intercooler as well. Oh really? So very nice. It's the tank for it anyways. Just gonna dump a little water out and put some ice in there, yeah. and you're good to go. Very nice. I was just telling him, seeing your guys' cars go down the drag strip, you guys and then I think believe that should a black Chevelle. And that thing is nasty. Yeah, and th he just said this thing was 3,900 years, I'm sure, is just about that. 38-ish. Yeah. yeah. So, knowing how much they weigh and it's a six-speed car and you're doing 9.0s and he's doing 10.0s, that's just crazy to me. Like, these cars are working really well. And then you're also going to drive it about 1,100 miles. Yeah, That's right. crazy to me. Right. Well, more than that. So he drove 1,200 just yeah, to get to yeah, miles. Yeah, I heard that yesterday. And then we drove, like, about 430 or something to get to... Great bend. Yeah. So, yeah. You yeah. guys don't trailer your shit in. He said he didn't even own a vehicle that could call either. us. Yeah. I got a Volkswagen Golf as my other car. So <laughs> <laughs> might look a little funny pulling a trailer. <laughs> is this your uh, watered air leaking back here? That is, what did I show you? That is my water to gas tank cooler. And that's 40 pounds of ice gone like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of the same. It's it's a little bit looks a little bit more professional than his uh his, his igloo with the fuel lines in there. And yeah, I mean, I run an air to air intercooler. He's got an air to water, air to water but yeah. he also coiled the fuel in there. Gotcha. Because that seems to be the biggest challenge is with the fuel injection and a return style system. Uh huh. Um, Vapor lock on it. Yeah, is you end up heating up all the fuel. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I did since last year is I ins and I can show you later if you want, but I insulated the fuel rails. So where the aluminum used to just bolt right to the manifold, I cut out a piece of aluminum and put phenolic spacers. And the other day I drove it, I saw a 40, 45 degree difference in temperature really? between the fuel rail and the intake manifold. Wow. And before they were the same. So you just put you put a couple bags of ice on top of it here and you're good to go? Yeah, and see, it's an aluminum tank. So you feel that? Because aluminum is such an awesome heat sink. Oh yeah, that's very the cool. The whole tank gets cool. Nice and cool. Yeah, it keeps it pretty good. Very nice. So, yeah. Like I just said to him, he obviously he has a bunch of tricks from doing race week this is obviously one of your tricks from race week and drag week so this would be my third race week and i did two drag weeks but with a different motor and you're just so you're just this is just stuff that you guys know to do and first year guys would have would never think of basically probably unless they read the forums and actually listen <laughs> <laughs> nobody listens come well, on yeah. you're just another racer you don't know right. anything. i don't either so. yeah. <laughs> but uh i'm glad yeah. to hear you guys are doing doing well on the road so We'll see you in Topeka. Cool, man. Good Thanks. luck to you. Yep. Uh, looks like one of my other favorite cars, the Stick Shift GTO, is being taken apart right now. Check it out. So, uh, I'm going to say the same thing I did the other guys. This is going to be a really stupid question, but how are things going? Well, it drove all the way here like a champ. <laughs> no issues at all. And then Bill wanted me to go run with, take him to get some parts. Are you going to blame this one on him? No, I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so what, what happened exactly? What, what went bad? We don't, we don't know. That, oh, you're that still figuring it out. Sure. Gotcha. We know the distributor is not the problem. Start. Not hitting anything. Start, you bastard. Let's no, nothing at all. I will have a full wire see if it's safe, because it might not be good to the distributor. Um, so yeah, he just needs to know how to wire. Uh, I'm about to pick up on that right now. But what I just realized is he drove it here from Canada. He drove it 1,200 miles and then another 400. He drove it basically 1,600 miles to Great Bend to start it and just drive it home. So if he can't fix it, he doesn't even own a truck and trailer, so he has to rent something to take it home. Hopefully, I'm guessing he's going to get it fixed. This isn't his first time doing this. Uh, just something in the ignition system. Hopefully, it's not that bad. His phone's dying, probably. Because we want to watch that. What are you guys doing? I don't know, watch a little watching our video. Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. Parts. I mean, we, we do what we can. You can run. All right, so we're making progress. We think maybe we're, we're just checking more stuff. What did Matt say? That's fair. Matt said check the uh, signal wire from uh, <laughs> the signal wire from down here back to the plug-in back there, and just make sure it's not broken between those two points before we before we try the box. How's it going? Morning. How late were you guys up working on this thing? I was done at 11.30 because it's not my car. <laughs> but I helped him this morning. He That's was up good. till 1.30. How's it going? It's running. I was about to say the car is here. I'm sure you're excited about that. What, what was the actual issue? What did you guys figure it out? As far as we can tell, yesterday when I changed the, I cleaned the pre-filter, my fuel pump, it, uh, it lifted one of the wires and arced it against the frame to change out the ECU. My good buddy Matt Blasco, before I left, he's like, I want to take my spare ECU? That's one of those questions you don't say no to. Yeah, exactly. It's like having a bad ground. It just does some funky stuff that it makes it really hard to troubleshoot. And I'm sure the last thing on your mind was, oh, the ECU just went bad. Yeah, I just drove 200 miles. Yeah. Like, what are the chances of it going bad? But exactly. Definitely not the ECU's fault. I mean, uh, some marking on the frame is probably what caused it. I, I like my shirt. Very nice. Yeah, it's very nice. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you guys here. Uh, you and the Fairlane here. Yeah. Probably my, honestly, probably two of my favorite cars at race week. Just because they nine and ten second cars and they're stick shift cars and they're almost 4,000 pounds a piece. Well, hopefully it'll be eight second car and nine second car. Oh, he's gonna turn it up a little bit. You hear that? He, he said, said he's coming. He said it's gonna be an eight second car at the end of the day. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. It's gonna be great. That's the next race. Is the race we want to line up next to each other today, not racing individually. That'd be awesome. Well, good yeah. luck to you guys. Thanks. All right, thank you. Yep. Say congrats on your nine today. Yeah. What well, you did a 972, 971? His was two, mine was one, but then he did a nine three. So uh, yeah. Every about five minutes I check to see if the car still starts because it's uh, <laughs> bewitched. You're, you're paranoid now. <laughs> we might have found that the uh, crank trigger 
It might not have been plugged in properly. Uh, Bill heard a different uh, click than before, so just make sure it still starts. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you guys got it running and everything. Yeah. And congrats on the pass today. It's making lots of power. Oh Just yeah. Gotta figure out how to drive now. <laughs> Is that the fastest the car's gone? No, it's been 964. Actually. Oh, okay. So that's the number we should look for right there. 964. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Well, we, we'll now. see you guys in Rogersville. Rogersville. Is that where the food is? Oh, we'll see you there. We'll see. Yeah, you, yeah we'll see you there. I haven't eaten since. Neither have I. I think we're actually gonna get food now because we were just so hungry. But we're all we're probably eat there too. Awesome. We're, we're fat asses. So we'll see you there. All right. Take care. Good luck. We're, well, Thanks. we're jackasses. So it there you go. Works out perfect. These are my two favorite cars on the property right now, probably. I mean, there's some really badass cars here, but two nearly four thousand pound cars, six speed running nines. That's just silly to me. instead of just pop. Yep, I had the same problem. Well, I want to run 890, that's what I want. Me that's too. what you want, too. No, too. I want to go 840s. <laughs> well, yeah. What's your quickest pass so far? 
902 first. Oh, year. You're, I knew you were close to it. Yeah, so. Dang. Let me check tires. And you're real close. <laughs> just pull the data log real quick and see where we're This at. is the perfect time for it. He's going, he's hitting the road after this one. GTO's been struggling. He was hitting boost cut yesterday. He made 20 pounds of boost, well, two days ago. Almost 2,000 crank horsepower. And now he's just struggling with some boost control issues and some other things, launch control. Hopefully he makes a good pass. Squirrely. Did you see that? I didn't even see his ET. I saw him go sideways. I know. I, I, was I think it was like up. 10 and 6 or something. I don't know. Well, he went third gear went sideways right. and then fourth. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, Close fourth gear was scary. Did he cross the center line? It looked like I don't think so. It wasn't. Jesus. He went, I think he went towards the wall and then wiggled back and then straightened it. It was straight before the shoot came out, which was good. Yeah, we need, he needs some tires. Jeez. Something. Man. Did you Jesus. Did you cross the center line? It's your motor. You were maybe way it sideways. Maybe it wasn't as bad was as I? There, but it was third gear went side and then fourth was like, Whoa. it was like, yeah. oh my god. It was straight before the shoot came out, but it was scary. He's like, oh, I was fine. <laughs> Did it feel bad? It feel bad. I mean, I knew I was, I mean. Did you have to pedal it in third? Or was it just like a short shift? It sounded weird. I might have pedaled it. Okay. It felt pretty snaky. Yeah. I know I was, I know I was, you know, a little. It seemed like it ran better. I heard the guy yeah. on the track go by on the golf cart. And I don't know if he's talking about you, but he was on the like, he's like, he's like, these idiots, someone's gonna get killed out guys thanks for watching that video if you have not checked out our merch store recently there's over a hundred items on there with a bunch of new releases we'll have a link in the description below so make sure you guys go check that out if you haven't already go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there and check out these couple videos over here also go ahead and check out our new channel 1320 video uncut we're gonna have a whole bunch of unseen content on that channel right there so make sure you stay tuned and check that out we'll see you guys in the next video